Hello everyone, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And, and we're, we're the Monster Hunter, Hunter Math, Math Guys. Guys. Welcome to our guide on solo crowd control chaining Kulf to Roth. We already have a video on how to CC chain KT with heavy bowgun, link to that in the top right. In this video, we will be instead covering how to do it with bow. We will be covering in depth how to do it, the builds you need, and the item loadouts and radial menu setups. Now, we already covered this in the Heavy Bowgun video, but in case you haven't seen that yet, let's cover what solo CC chaining is and why you want to do it against KT. When we say solo CC chaining, that basically means your teammates don't have to help you apply any of the CC. During the paras or KOs, they basically just get to beat on KT for free. But first off, why CC chain KT? Well, obviously you want to CC KT because it means your team can easily DPS the horns for that juicy horn break. But the main reason why we have to chain them is because KT has a unique mechanic. After you CC her, if you do not chain the next CC, then she will get up and lava breath instantly. During this entire animation, you cannot deal shot type damage to her, nor apply any status to her. So you have to wait until the lava breath is over to start CCing her again. This also means if you don't manage to chain the CC, your entire team has to scatter in order to not die to the lava. This means that your team has to waste precious time during the CC running back to the head to keep beating on it afterwards. Conversely, if you do chain the CC, then your teammates barely have to move in order to keep hitting her. This gives them the best possible uptime for your DPS teammates. Which is very important because you only have about 6 minutes before she just says bye. Bo is more forgiving on the crafting and resources side. It uses a lot less resources to do its chain and you can't accidentally craft too many coatings and not have enough of the other. They use separate materials. However, it is far less lenient on the execution front. On CC Heavy Bowgun, you can afford to miss or miscount your shots or get flinched by teammates or bombs and still get the chain off just fine. On Bow, you have the space to miss at most two shots during your entire combo or the chain dies. For this reason, we generally recommend that you learn CC Heavy Bowgun first because it's far more forgiving. However, Bo does have the advantage of being better at KO than the Heavy Bowgun and therefore is actually able to do a solo 6 CC chain by itself. In other words, a Sleep Para KO Sleep Para KO. However, this is very tight and hard to pull off consistently. You need to have Impact Mantle enough during the second para to pull it off. However, how much of that you can get is very dependent on how quickly your team sets up bombs during the second sleep. The second advantage Bo has is that after the CC chain is done, if KT is not yet dead, you can easily deal 30 plus damage per arrow once you switch to power coatings. This makes CC Bo by far the best hard carry option against KT, and it's generally what I run when doing with viewer hunts or three person sieges. Here is the console build for CC Bo against KT. We use Leggy Bow both for the Sleep Plus coatings, but also because it lets us deal very high damage to KT with power coatings due to the high ice damage. Constitution 3, Slugger 3, Para and Sleep Attack 3, Para Coat, and Mighty Bow are mandatory. The chain simply doesn't work without them. Ice Attack 2 is nice because more damage, and the same deal with Bombardier, more bomb damage is nice against KT. Stamina cap up makes the 6th chain much easier, in fact I'm not even sure if it's possible without it, but I don't play on PC so I haven't had a chance to check. Also Zora and Xenogama do make this set a bit better, but not that much. You do gain 2 health boost as well as 1 ice attack, both of which are pretty nice. And here is the PC build for CC Bow. It has all of the same important skills in there. However, it is missing stamina cap up, which as I mentioned may make a 6th chain impossible. However, the 5 chain is very possible without it. And credit to Tyr over the Monster Hunter Gathering Hub for putting this build together. Also, this does assume you eat for Feline Slugger. Feline Slugger is not mandatory to make the 5 chain work. However, you will need to land an extra shot or two on the head in order to make the first KO happen. Without Feline Slugger, the 6 chain is extremely hard to get, so it is recommended. For bow, it's a bit harder to count shots per status because the application amount varies depending on charge level and whether it's a rapid shot or a power shot. So let's just jump straight into the chain sequence instead. So make sure you have dash juice as well as your sleep coatings ready once you enter area 4. Charge to max level and sleep KT once she's in a good position. 
It takes two rapid shots and two power shots a sleeper, or four rapid shots and one power shot. The most important thing here is making sure you land her in a good position. Make sure that you grab your Mega Barrel Bombs and get ready for the Double Bomb. If you have time before the Double Bomb detonation, go ahead and recraft your bombs as well as your sleep coatings. Place your next round of bombs down, as well as make sure you have max sleep coatings at this point. And go ahead and throw on Impact Mantle. Switch to your para coatings and then charge to max level while you wait for the wake up. Detonate yourself if your team isn't going to, then land one dash dance on the horns, dash and hold the charge. Your next dash dance will para, so make sure you time it. Switch to sleep coatings and then combo to max charge level. After that, your next dash dance needs to not land on the head or you'll trigger the KO too early. Which kills the chain because otherwise you don't have enough time to apply the status you need. After that, make sure you land one dash dance on the head and then hold your second dash dance because it will KO KT. Make sure to time it. Dash forward after this if you need to cover the distance and switch to para coatings. Do one combo to max charge then switch back to sleep coatings. This buffers the para enough for us to get the 5 chain. Now just combo with sleep coatings until you get her asleep. Now switch to para coatings and just combo as much as you can to apply as much status as you can. About 1.5 seconds after she lands, she will not be wakeable, so try to squeeze in a power shot at least if you can. And then make sure you max craft back up all of your para coatings. Then place down your mega barrel bombs and then charge your bow up to max level while getting ready for the wake up. Depending on how much of the para you managed to buffer earlier, it'll take 4 to 5 dash dances to para her. It takes a little getting used to to figure out exactly how many you need to para her, but if you know you're gonna para next shot, throw in a Kaokanut. At this point, you're just gonna be spamming power shot into Kaokanut into power shot, etc. If your team was fast about bomb setups and you're landing your Kaokanuts well, then you should have enough impact mantle to get the KO. However, don't feel bad if you don't, it's really tricky getting it. Regardless, at this point, switch to power coatings and just shoot her face. Alright, so we know that there was a lot of stuff on screen, so let's play that back again without any of that so you can see what it looks like again. I have to say, Jinx, your CC bow rocks. Now let's talk about the item loadout and radio menus for CC bow. This'll be a little easier than CC heavy bowgun. 
For ammo, you only need 50 power coatings, 20 sleep coatings, and 20 para coatings. Also, dash juice is pretty much required. You won't be able to manage your stamina without it. We still recommend that you bring bomb materials as well. Here's the list of materials you'll need. You'll need two mega barrel bombs, two large barrel bombs, and at least seven devil's blight. We usually just bring 10. You'll also need five large barrels and five base level gunpowders, but again, we just bring all 20. All of these are buyable except for the mega barrel bombs, devil blight, and base level gunpowders. For Devil's Blight, you can get that at the farm. You can also farm fire herbs and nitro shrooms, which you can use to make the gunpowder that you need. You'll also need 10 para shrooms and 10 sleep herbs. And don't forget the empty files. This will let you craft more sleep and para coatings. You can also bring 20 nitro shrooms for more power coatings. However, that's an additional investment you have to make, as nitro shrooms are also used for gunpowder. And of course, bring your normal loadout items like healing potions and cool drinks. And while you can always grab a Farcaster when you spawn into Katie's Den, I still put one in my loadout because I'm super forgetful. For your radio menu, you'll need crafting hotkeys for large and mega barrel bombs. You'll also want to throw in some for the sleep and paracoding crafts. Anything else is up to you, but again, we recommend mantles, healing items, or even the Shoryuken emote if you have it. Also, one nice thing is that Katie's thresholds do not change when she is in area 1 through 4. That means if you want to practice this, you can just go into area 1 and then just practice your chain against her solo. Building the muscle memory will help a lot with not messing it up in area 4. And that about does it guys! CC chain kills in area 4 are by far the fastest way to clear area 4. Also, because we know that hunting KT is much more fun in a group, Tuna has set us up a new Discord server, the Matalos Nest. We have a very active community of hunters who are all looking to group up, especially for Call of the Wrath. And we've included several looking for group channels for each platform, as well as several hunting channels so you guys can communicate. Link to the Discord will be in the description. And remember, Katie is best taken on with the team, so be sure to share the video with your friends and squadmates. And next up, we have a video coming out with all of the meta builds for fighting KT once you actually have her gear and weapons. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down there if you want to be notified when that video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like. If you found out something new, let us know in the comments. Happy hunting, hunters! Good luck with your KT weapon drop RNG, and Tuna and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.